Ahoy hearties! Are you ready for some recommendations? That, well, that was like half accent, half not. I'm just popping in here really quickly to kind of just provide a little preface for this video. I asked for some recommendation clips for the Scallywagathon reading prompts. If you don't know what the Scallywagathon is, you can either check out my announcement video or you can check out our website, which is linked down below. It's a choose your own adventure pirate themed readathon. I, I had so many responses and I do want to take the time to thank all these creators for submitting things. They are all smaller booktubers and I just really wanted to showcase them. They are either people that I was already subscribed to or have since subscribed to and I would highly suggest checking out all their channels which are going to be linked down below. I will have timestamps so that you can jump around to challenges if you're looking for specific recommendations. I would suggest watching the whole video. I know it is a bit longer but I hope that you still enjoy it and still check out all these lovely creators. We are less than a week away now from setting sail and I am getting so excited excited. First we are going to meet the crew and then you will see the recommendations so uh, I hope that you guys end up enjoying this video. So much time and effort went in from so many different people and they've done me such a huge favor and I'm so thankful so thank you to you creators and thank you to you watchers. Hi, my lovely friends. My name is Margaret and you can find me at the channel The Word Nerd. Hey everyone, my name is Allie from the channel Read by Allie. I'm Jordan. My channel is Sorry Book Solid. Ahoy friends and enemies. My name is Isabel and I'm from the channel Happy For Now. Hi, my name is Kate and I'm from the channel Chapter Kate. Hello everyone, my name is Shanice from the channel Shanice Noel. My name is Jen and my channel is Ifers Inklings. Hello, my name is Nicole Marie on YouTube. Hello friends, my name is Jess. Welcome to Books Past Bedtime. Hi everyone, I'm Whitney from A Darker Shaggy to Whitney. Oh, my name. Hi, hello, I'm Allie from The Chaotic Reader. What's up my loves? My name is Paige. This is Patience with Paige. is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Moss. Uh, Sarah J Moss is definitely one of the most popular authors here on booktube and today uh, House of Earth and Blood or Crescent City is not only my favorite book by Sarah J Moss but this is like my favorite book of the year so far. So for those of you who somehow have not learned about what this book is about, this book follows Bryce Quinlan who finds herself roped into helping the uh, equivalent of the police force in this urban fantasy world after um, a traumatic event that she was directly uh, a part of. A couple years after this event they learn that the person who they thought committed the crime actually didn't. Bryce and uh, the fallen angel Hunt, who has been appointed as like a bodyguard, uh, tried to figure out what happened and who actually committed this crime. I'm trying to keep the synopsis as vague as possible as the actual written synopsis for this book spoils a pretty big thing. It happens um, like within the first 60 or so pages of the book, but I think it's super duper powerful. So if you're able to avoid that spoiler, I definitely say try to go in without it. However, um, it's uh, so pretty impactful even if you know it's coming. Um, but this one, even though it's a chunker, it's still, um, I found it a pretty fast read. I know some people said it was a bit of a slog for the first couple hundred pages, but the ending is one of the best book endings out there. So if you want to try to dip your toes into moss, definitely recommend this one for you. I've read Binti before and I really want to read Binti Home. So for this recommendation I'm going with Binti. This is a sci-fi uh, adventure as Binti leaves her home which is Earth to seek further education in space and along the way there is a confrontation with another species and it's looking at communication and how far you're willing to go to better yourself. Deep Sea Legend, I could not resist recommending the original Deep Sea Legend himself, Percy Jackson, or at least his book, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. This is a retelling of Greek mythology from the eyes of a 12 year old boy who finds out one day that his father is Poseidon. I selected Circe by Madeline Miller. This book centers around Greek mythology and the Greek gods. We follow Circe, who is the daughter of the Titan Helios and she has a gift for witchcraft, and when this begins to threaten the gods, they banish her from Olympus. And so this book follows her life in banishment, her working on her witchcraft, and all of the 
mythological beings and creatures that she encounters. Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. This is a 105 page novella based around the myth of the green man. So there is a character named Tobias. He's essentially a wild man. He is one with the forest. Um, he has more than just a green thumb. He lives a simple existence in his house with his cat and his dryads. However, there is a new owner of the wood named Henry Silver, and as he kind of becomes more acquainted with this individual, their relationship grows closer and some things about Tobias's past get brought up. And he is forced to reconcile with not only those events, but the green magic of the forest and some darkness within his own heart. This is a beautifully written story and it doesn't take long to read, so do yourself a favor and pick it up. Two for you today, um, House of Salt and Sorrows, which I actually just read recently. I loved it. I gave it five stars. And of course, Cersei, my preferred Madeline. Miller pick and I highly recommend both of these books if you have not picked them up yet. Penelope by Margaret Atwood. This is following Penelope as she reflects on life in the Odyssey, the Trojan War and life in Hades and it's a really unique take on the women's perspective. I read it back in 2011-2012 for school and I really really enjoyed it. It was one of the only English books that I ever actually enjoyed. I definitely would recommend branching into this. I think it's a feminist take on it as well. For I, I, Captain, I would like to recommend a book with not one, not two, but three eyes in the title, and that is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Manon. This is a fantastic story about family and love and finding yourself. Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. This is a middle grade fantasy in which we follow a young girl named Sophie Foster. For as long as she can remember, she has been able to read other people's minds. But one day on a school field trip, she encounters a strange boy that tells her that this is because she is actually an elf. And he whisks her away to the elven world and adventures ensue. She has to leave her human life behind and find out what her elven powers are. And this has a great group of friends and is a really fun series. The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pam. This is a hard-hitting YA contemporary book about this teenage girl named Lee, who before the book starts, her mother has died by suicide. And Lee is convinced that her mother has turned into a bird and is trying to communicate with her and tell her to get in touch with her mom's side of the family and to travel to Taiwan to meet her ancestors and learn about that part of her culture. And it is a beautiful, beautiful book. Obviously, Lee is struggling with the grief of the loss of her mother. She's also learning more about her family. It's a book about self-discovery. It's so beautiful. The cover is obviously also beautiful. I know that this book made its round around booktube uh, a couple of years ago but I just wanted to recommend it again to anybody who might have missed it and forgotten about it. This book is totally worth the hype, so beautiful, highly recommend. Dress in the Light, Kelly Lloyd Gilbert. It is a young, young adult novel that follows a boy named Danny. Danny is gay, he's in his senior year of high school getting ready to head off to design school in Rhode Island and he is in love with his best friend. But along with that, his parents are immigrants and um, he uncovers some family secrets that uh, really kind of plays a devastating part in his life. This is definitely a hard-hitting contemporary, it has an amazing friend group, and um, again, it has that romance and such a beautiful cover. This would fit multiple prompts for the Scallywagathon. Now, Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson also fits the I.I. Captain prompt. This is a memoir. We follow Jacqueline's life in the North um, with a, a two-parent family and siblings, and then we see how she is treated when she visits her grandparents in the South. Um, it is a completely different world, and then she also becomes a single parent household and how that impacts her not being able to see her father. And they also then later in life, um, I think when she's starting um, middle school or high school, they move to uh, New York City where she gains a stepfather and I believe a younger brother. Um, and again, she is treated differently again. It's middle grade and um, it was published in 2014, so more than three years ago.
I hope that uh, you are able to get some good recommendations from these two books for the II Captain or other prompts in the Scallywagathon. And good luck on your journey. For this challenge, I would recommend Girls Like Us by Brandy Pink. This is a YA historical fiction novel set in the 1970s, and it follows four different girls who are all dealing with teenage pregnancy, but the rest of their lives are all vastly different. It follows sisters Izella and Ola. Ola is actually pregnant, and Izella, her sister, feels responsible for her sister even more so now. They also know this other girl in their town named Mississippi, who is also pregnant. She is a lot younger than the other girls and is very immature and does not understand the nature of her predicament. Mississippi meets our fourth narrative when her father sends her to Chicago to give birth in this home for teenage pregnant girls. And our fourth narrator, Susan, she is actually white and the daughter of an anti-choice senator. The stories of these four girls then weave together into one larger story about a woman's right to choose her future. This is an amazing, powerful, and moving story. It is written by a Black author, which is another plus, and it is so underrated, and I really think more people should read it. Definitely would recommend. Tale of Lightning by Rebecca Rowan Horse. This story is inspired by Navajo mythology. It's sort of a a climate change apocalypse story. It is about a supernaturally gifted monster hunter named Maggie Hosky who ends up going to help find this missing girl from a small town. Instead she finds a lot more than she bargained for and by that I mean monsters. I feel like this book is really good for readathons because it's very fast paced so if you want to read about ancient legends, trickster gods, and dark witchcraft set in the backdrop of a post-apocalyptic climate change kind of deal. That's not the best description, but that is my recommendation for this challenge. It's a book that's definitely been making its rounds here on booktube and that is Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Um, oh my gosh, this book was so cute. So this is the second book in the Brown Sisters series. However, you can read it as a standalone if you want to. It does make references to events in the first book, um, but really doesn't spoil much other than the Endgame couple, which probably could figure out just from the synopsis of the first book. Um, but this book follows uh, Danny Brown who is a, a PhD student and a professor at a college and after a fire drill gone wrong um, ends up having to be rescued by the security guards off and uh, he uh, ends up carrying her out bryo style basically just like this and that is uh, captured and goes viral online and so they decide to fake date after their meet cute and the, st the story kind of goes from there. This book also does not shy away from difficult topics such as a really fantastic portrayal of anxiety and it was just so freaking cute. If you're looking for just like a fluffy rom-com during these dark times it's definitely a great one. A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. There's an eye in pinch and an eye in magic. So there you go. This is an absolutely stunningly atmospheric middle grade adventure about three sisters who are cursed to not be able to leave the island they live on or they will die. These sisters get some magical items that have been passed down through generations and go on a quest to try and find a way to break this curse. There's a little more to it than that, but I don't want to get into any spoilers. If you are looking for something just fun and magical with an extremely atmospheric, almost kind of creepy world at times, I would definitely recommend you read this one. So I'll leave a link below to Gavin's middle grade recommendations for Believeathon. And the first book that he recommended was the Wittisham Sisters series, and that is A Pinch of Magic and A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. I absolutely adore both of these books, and I definitely feel that A Sprinkle of Sorcery fits the vibes of this readathon so well. It they're um, on a boat and it's a race against time. They're facing off with pirates and it's just a really beautiful middle grade and definitely would recommend. So if you've read A Pinch of Magic or want that to fulfill another prompt and then dive into A Sprinkle of Sorcery, I definitely recommend it for this. For Ahoy Hearties, I would like to recommend Heist Society by Ali Carter. This is a fantastic series about a group of friends that like to blow up things and break into museums. Rakuman by Satsuki Yoshino. This is a manga series following Seshuo Honda. He is a professional calligrapher and he encounters some trouble when his work is displayed at a museum and he gets into an argument with the museum curator. In order to move past this, he moves to a remote rural town 
on an island. It is just so sweet and wholesome. He befriends a lot of the residents of this island. They kind of force their way into his life, but they are really caring. And yeah, this is probably one of the most wholesome and somewhat odd group of friends that I have ever seen. Do You Dream of Tara Sue by Temi O. Oh. This is a YA science fiction book about this group of young teenagers who have decided to go on a journey in a spaceship to discover another planet. They've had to go through a rigorous training process and everything, uh, but the journey is 23 years long. And so in making that decision to go, they are choosing to leave behind their friends and family in pursuit of this new world and potentially making history and setting up life for humanity on another planet. And so this very small group of teenagers, I think it's six of them, obviously becomes really close in this journey and in their training process. The science is not too heavy if you're someone kind of scared or nervous about science fiction. It focuses a lot more on the characters and their friendships with each other and their conflicts with each other and just them really trying to survive on this super long unknown journey into space. I had to pick the prompt because it is featuring a friend group and if you know me or are already familiar with my channel or whatever then you know that I just had to recommend one of my favorite books of all time and that is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. As you can see I tapped the heck out of this. This features a very strong friendship group because we follow a crew on a spaceship. This is more like speculative fiction, soft sci-fi-ish and they go on a long haul kind of job so they have to be on the spaceship together for a year and they really get the opportunity to form this bond with each other and really get to know each other better, form these friendships because they are stuck together on a spaceship for a year for the job to be successful. They have to get to know each other. So I definitely recommend this one for a book featuring a strong friendship. It's also really diverse. We deal with aliens but also humans and how they have to interact with each other, respect each other's pronouns, preferences. So a favorite of mine. It is very character driven so you do have to like that. To like this, it's not for everyone but I definitely love it and I would really recommend it for this prom. So yeah, I hope you all enjoy the readathon. I'm really excited and that's my recommendation. <laughs> Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So this is a new adult romance between the first son of America and the Prince of Wales. It is very enemies to lovers. Super fun, super cute, super hot romance. I am specifically recommending this book because it has one of my favorite friend groups that I've ever read. In this friend group is Alex's sister June who is the first daughter of the United States as well as Nora who is the the daughter of the vice president of the United States and when Alex, Henry, June, and Nora all get together and form this friend group it is amazing. They have such great dynamics, such great banter, they are so funny. By far one of the best friend groups I have ever read. I love them so much and they've really made this book. Series by Jake herself. I say the whole series because the whole series revolves around friend groups but definitely book one is very much uh, around a friend group. This book has some layers in it but kind of the main plot is that we follow Evie with her best friend Lemon Fresh, a robot named Cricket, and a lifelike named Ezekiel have to navigate th their way through this like, desolate futuristic America. So basically this book has been pitched as um, Blade Runner meets Romeo and Juliet with the side of Mad Max with some X-Men on the sidelines. I think that's a really great way to describe this one. Um, this one is kind of just like a dystopian, futuristic, uh, desolate adventure story that has so many twists and turns in it. It was one of the most memorable endings um, I've read in quite a while and the rest of the series will also totally work for the friend group prompt as well. Witches of Ashram Room by E. Latimer. This is following a coven of witches and Danielle Walsh who is struggling to cope with her OCD um, after being outed as bisexual in her small Irish community. And the coven relationships and friendships in this is just so strong and so wonderful. And yeah, so definitely we'd recommend this as a friend group. The coven itself feels like family and friendship. I have selected Well Met by Jen DeLuca. 
This is a romance in which we follow Emily. She has moved in with her older sister after her sister has gotten into a car accident and she is helping take care of her sister's teenage daughter. But her niece wants to join this summer renaissance fair and in order to volunteer for it she needs a parental guardian and so Emily joins the renaissance fair as well and she butts heads with the man in charge of the fair whose name is Simon but when they are in character at the renaissance fair he is this pirate that she has such a strong chemistry with and I just thought reading a romance with a pirate was perfect for this readathon. My favorite romance, All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This is an adult romance book and it's different from a lot of romances in that it's actually following a married couple. Uh, you follow them seven years into their marriage as things have started to go stale, they're struggling with infertility, as well as you also follow them at the beginning stages of their relationship. So you're getting that juxtaposition of early on when things were picture perfect, everything was happy, and then, you know, present day when they're really struggling to keep their marriage together. And I really like that it's very deep and emotional and deals with those hard-hitting issues. It's not just a light and fluffy romance, but there are definitely some really cute moments in here too. So this is one of my favorite romances of all time and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Romance I'm going to recommend to you is a full genre romance, like capital R romance, and that is 40 Love by Olivia Dade. This book features Tess, who is an assistant school principal working to become a principal, on vacation for two weeks on an island. Uh, she ends up having lessons with this real hot tennis coach and heat ensues. Um, there's lots of great banter. The meat cute in the beginning of this book is to die for. Good. Like, it's so good. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they just really kind of find their way to be together and work through some issues. This is also, as far as tropes go, um, a meet cute, of course, um, an older woman, younger male character. She's 40, he's 26. And yeah, it's a vacation romance. It's just perfect for August because honestly, like it just made me want to go sit on a beach even though it's so hot out. Um, and yeah, the tennis aspect is really fun. I don't think there's a lot of romances out there with tennis in them. So feel free to check this out uh, and I hope you enjoy it. This is my favorite romance today, The Romance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. This book follows Abin, who is a Major League Baseball player and is now um, at risk of divorcing his wife. And his friends help him save his marriage by using romance books. They form a book club where they read the romance novels. And this book is not only laugh out loud funny, but it's really, really heartwarming and it's one that I just absolutely adore. I am going to recommend, okay, don't hate me for this, A Court of Thrones and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I have to, I have to recommend this because if you haven't read this yet, and you keep hearing about it everywhere because I know that you do, you need to read it. This is just like my all-time favorite series for romance and fantasy and good times. Chef's Kiss, it is, it is that good. I didn't expect it to live up to the hype, but it did. So if you want some fantasy romance and you haven't read this yet, you need to read this. If for some reason you have no idea what this is about, I'm not sure how, but I will explain. This follows Feyre, and her and her family are very poor, so she is out hunting and kills this big wolf. Well, it turns out that this big wolf was a fae, so a fae lord comes and kidnaps her away to live with him in his mansion as payment for what she has done. She then has to deal with living away from her family in the world of the fae, which is very dangerous, and of course there's a romance. This one is sort of a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but the rest of the books stray away from that as you get further into the trilogy. It's a good time, okay? If you haven't read it yet, you should give it a chance. For Precious Cargo, I would like to recommend Other Words from Home by Jasmine Warga. This is such a wonderful, like deeply emotional but sweet book you will not regret having read it. It is about a girl who immigrates from Syria to the United States and the things that she has to juggle having family on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Eva Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. 
It is about a young witch named Eva Evergreen, and she is trying to prove her magical abilities as a witch in order to become an apprentice witch. And if she is not able to prove her abilities, her magic will be taken away. So she journeys to this small coastal town that is in need of a witch to help them with their problems. And she lives there for about a year solving their problems with her semi-magical fixes. And since her magic is not as strong as she thinks it should be, these fixes don't always go as intended. Also, if you like the movie Kiki's Delivery Service, this is very reminiscent of that. My recommendation for this challenge is The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a super sweet and sapphic middle grade following 12-year-old Sunny St. James, who is a young girl who actually has a heart condition, but at the beginning of this book, she gets heart surgery and is able to live more of a normal life. So she makes this list of things that she wants to do with her new heart. Number one is to do some things that she wasn't able to do before. For example, she really wants to learn how to surf. Number two is that she wants to find a new best friend because her old best friend ended up ditching her when Sunny's heart condition started to affect her life and what she was able to do. And number three is that she wants to kiss a boy for the first time. So as she's going about her new life plan, she ends up accomplishing the second goal of meeting a new best friend in this girl named Quinn. But as her friendship with Quinn grows, Sunny begins to wonder if she even wants to kiss a boy at all and maybe would rather actually kiss her friend Quinn. And overall, this is just a really beautiful story. This is one of my all-time favorite books and it is perfect if you love hard-hitting middle grades with great LGBT plus rep. Absolutely absolutely have to recommend what is one of my new favorite middle grades I've read so far this year, and that is going to be The Land of Yesterday by K.A. Reynolds. This, this book is so stunning. It is like reading a Tim Burton movie. If you've seen any of the Tim Burton's claymation movies or you like that kind of feel, this is that in book form. I could imagine it in that style in my head the whole time I was reading it, and it was just so good. It is beautifully written, it is atmospheric, and it is so, so emotional. This book follows a young girl whose brother has just recently died, and his mother is so heartbroken about this. Her brother's soul has gone to the land of yesterday, where all souls go, and her mother goes to follow him because she can't bear to be without him. This book also has a house that is alive and turns evil and a whole bunch of crazy magical stuff going on. And this young girl goes to follow her mother into the land of yesterday. It's, it's so good. Seriously, if you like Tim Burton movies, you will love this book. And it's another one that I think if you're not super into middle grades, if you like kind of more lyrical writing, I think you would really enjoy this, even if you're not generally a middle grade reader. Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the Well by Ashley Herring Blake. I read this recently for Detectathon, hosted by Mind of Bully. This was a great book, and I'm so thankful because this is phenomenal. So Ivy has recently lost her home when a tornado came through her town and destroyed her home, and she had a sketchbook filled with pictures of her and girls. And so it's exploring sexuality it's exploring how you rebuild when you feel that you've lost everything and it's just so beautiful and I love Ashley Harry Blake's writing I've loved gold's made of stars so yeah definitely this middle grade absolutely wonderful Erupted might be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm going to say Slay by Brittany Morris. This book originally came out in September of 2019, and I don't remember seeing anything about it uh, until very recently when people have just started reading it and raving about it. I absolutely loved this book so much. I already know it's going to be one of my probably top three favorites of 2020. This is a YA science fiction book about uh, this girl named Kira who has created developed and now runs her own virtual reality online video game. And it's a video game created by this black teen for black players and it incorporates black culture and it's just a space for black video game players to go where they can feel safe playing a game. They're not going to get harassed. They're not going to have slurs thrown at them. It's a place where they really feel like they belong in a space that has been created just for them. It's a book that has definitely been making the rounds recently but it's so worth the hype and that is House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Um, Oh my gosh, this book was everything I wanted from the big synopses I was getting from people and somehow more. So this book follows Leonard, who is 
a social worker for magical children is kind of the best way to describe his job. After several years of service to this organization, they sent him on this pretty uh, secret assignment to the House of the Cerulean Sea, which is supposed to be the home of the most dangerous kids in this world, including Lucy the Antichrist. Lana needs to go over to the House of the Cerulean Sea and assess if these children are as dangerous as they are led to believe or if their caretaker has things under control. This book was just so sweet. If you're a fan of the Wayward Children series, you will definitely love this one. There's some really fantastic moments in here. And there's also a male male romance in here, which is own voices. So definitely want to recommend this one. If you're looking for a book that has exploded with popularity and is totally worth the hype, I personally have never seen a rating for this book less than five stars. And I don't think we're going to because this book was just near perfection. Washed Ashore, I would like to recommend A Wounded Name by Dot Hutchison. This is a retelling of Hamlet at a boarding school from Ophelia's point of view. It's a little spooky, it's a little creepy, it's a whole lot sad, and yet somehow I still love it. The Art of Fielding by Chad Harbach. This is a book that I have not seen anyone else talk about on booktube ever. This is a YA contemporary book that follows a group of boys, men, uh, who are on a collegiate baseball team. And it follows them over multiple years, and it focuses not only on the sport of baseball and their team camaraderie and their friendships, but also outside of the sport. It's a very complex book, and I was pleasantly surprised by how invested I became in the characters. I highly, highly recommend this if you like hard-hitting books that have a tinge of a sports aspect to them. The baseball is not the primary part of this book, but more of an accent to the character study of these characters. I definitely want to recommend Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. This book is one of my all-time favorites. It is the start of a trilogy, and if you want enemies to lovers, if you want magic, if you want a badass female character, you've got it in this. There's also intrigue, politics, It's it's got everything that you could want in a YA fantasy. But just to note that it was published quite a while ago. The first time I read it was in middle school, so there might be parts of it that don't hold up to the test of time quite as much. But I did a reread last year and still thought they were absolutely fantastic, so I would definitely still recommend them. These books follow Yelena, and she is in the dungeon because she murdered someone who was an abuser of her. But because that person's father was so powerful, she is now in the dungeons. But she is offered the position of poison taster for the commander, which means she will learn to detect different kinds of poisons and taste his food. And then if she dies, she can quickly shout out what kind of poison it is so that they can track it. And then the commander won't die, but she would be dead. But still better than being hung for murdering your own abuser. So she takes this position with Valak, who is the poison master, basically, and... It just goes on from there. There's a lot more to it, but it would basically be spoilers to tell you anything more. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin Alira Sands, and this is following Aristotle and Dante as they discover life together. They develop a really powerful bond and friendship and just exploring how life is different for both of them, but they can come together and overcome hurdles to really just be the best friends that they can be. And yeah, I think this is brilliant. And I think this was 2012 publication, so definitely more than three plus years. The next and I'm sure you've heard of this one before. But I know I will be reading it for this readathon, and I absolutely cannot wait to pick it up. It's also kind of short, so it's perfect for a long readathon. I'm actually recommending the prequel, and that is Into the Drowning Deep, and the prequel is Rolling in the Deep. So this is following a voyage that went into the Mariana Trench to film a mockumentary about mermaids, and this Discovery crew is going to find what happened because seven years ago that crew never returned. Rolling in the Deep is following that crew from seven years ago. I don't think you need to read Into the Drowning Deep to maximize Rolling in the Deep. You can read it first, and technically it is a prequel, um, but yeah, I definitely Definitely recommend either of them. Um, they're just really atmospheric and spooky reads that definitely involve sirens. 
is Heroin by Mindy McGinnis. It's a YA, hard-hitting contemporary book about this high school softball player who is injured in a car wreck and is prescribed painkillers and ends up getting addicted to those painkillers and eventually getting lost in the world of drugs. And it's extremely hard-hitting, uh, lots of trigger warnings, but I found it so compelling to read. I couldn't not recommend one of my favorites of 2018, and that is If We Were Villains by Emma El Rio. This is following a group of students at an elite Shakespearean school, and there was a incident 10 years ago, so one of them is now in jail, and 10 years on, he's been released. And this is following his story of what actually happened, why all of this unfurled as it did, and yeah, I absolutely love everything about it. I think it would be pretty quick for a readathon. I've tried to find ones that would suit well for having just eight days, but you only need to read four over the time. But yeah, I definitely, definitely recommend this. I think it is so much fun, and it's just so atmospheric and wonderful. Is the Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. I mean, not only is this illustration on the front cover beautiful, but the sign is pink, which I love. And the naked hardcover of this book is probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. I read this book via audiobook, but as I was reading it, I knew that I still wanted a physical copy to have for myself because it was so pretty, uh, and I'm so glad to have it. What this book is about is this mixed race gay teen uh, named Michael who lives in London, and we follow him from early childhood into his time in university as he is discovering his own gender and sexual identities and starts to explore the world of drag. It's very impactful how it deals with self-discovery. It's also a beautifully written book. It's written in verse, and bonus is the audiobook is narrated by the author if you're interested in consuming it that way. But again, I highly recommend the physical version just because it is such a pretty book. And the final recommendation I have is Gold Doubloons, um, a book that was a cover by, and one book that I bought instantly because of the cover was The Bells by Tonya Clayton. Uh, this is following Camellia as she navigates into the royal family. In this world, everyone's born grey and the bells have the ability to add colour, life and beauty to the world. It's interesting to see how the story unfolds and that there is deeper secrets running. Um, it says, when the queen asks Camilla to break the rules she lives by to save the alien princess, she faces an impossible decision. Protect herself in the way of the bells or risk her own life and change the world forever. So I highly recommend this. I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. It's quick to fly through because it is YA. So even though it's a little bit on the chunky side, um, it's definitely a quick read. Thanks again to all those lovely creators for making these clips and allowing me to use them. And I hope that you guys have found some really good reads. See you on my set sail.